I'm always looking for unwanted synthesizers and drum machines, whether they're functional or faulty. I hope to save as many of these fantastic machines and keep them working and making music for as long as possible. This is my SynthQuest. In this episode of SynthQuest, we're checking out the Korg 700. The Korg 700 is a single oscillator analog monophonic synthesizer that was released in 1973 and has the honourable title of being the first monosynth produced by Korg. The 700 is, in some ways, a close relative of the Korg Prototype 1, which was created in 1970 by Fumio Mieda. The Prototype 1 featured the famous traveller filter, the percussion singing envelope, and function switches later to appear on the 700. The 700 was also released as the Mini Korg K1 under the Univox brand. The build is solid, consisting of a steel carriage with real wooden side panels and end blocks. The 700 is designed to sit as an accompanying keyboard on top of another larger keyboard. Because of this, there are rubber feet underneath, and the two rear ones can be unscrewed to raise and tilt the angle of the unit. Also, the main controls have been placed under the keys on the front facing panel rather than on top, like most other synthesizers. On the rear of the unit are two quarter inch mono outputs, one high and one low and there is a latch door where the power cable is tucked away. The 700 has a single oscillator TS200011. From the oscillator circuit we get triangle, square, sawtooth, plus a chorus 1 and chorus 2 waveform. Oscillator pitch can be selected in footages ranging from 32 foot, which is the lowest, 16 foot, 8 foot, 4 foot, and 2 foot, which is the highest. The master tuning is controlled with the pitch slider on the far right. The first section to shape the tone of the chosen waveform is the traveller section, which is what we now refer to our modern synths as the filter section. The top slider acts as a low pass filter, and the bottom slider is a high pass filter. The VCF IC is a TS201012, and between this and the VCO IC, we get the 700's iconic sound. To further aid this section there are two switches, expand and bright, which basically add resonance to our filter section. Next to the traveller section we have a basic envelope, controlling attack speed and decay speed. On this unit the decay ranges from percussion, which is short, and singing, which is long. This envelope is controlled by the keyboard which engages it when a key is pressed, and disengages it when a key is released. To enable a slow release after a key has been disengaged, you can flip the sustain switch on. The length of this function cannot be adjusted. There is a bender switch which glides into the current note from a whole tone below, and there's a portamento switch which glides from the previously held note to the next held note. There is a slider on the right to adjust the portamento speed. We also have a vibrato switch which modulates the pitch of the currently held note. This effect is controlled by the speed and depth sliders on the right, as well as a vibrato delay. 
Finally, there is a repeat switch, which repeatedly triggers a held note. This is a great function, and besides having a rate control slider, its effect is very noticeable when adjusting the envelope and traveler functions as well. The 700 is a fantastic synth to own, and is a great sounding synth with surprising versatility. If you're looking to calibrate or customize your 700, the internal circuits are easy to access, and from here you can adjust some of the ranges of your front panel controls. On the VCO board, you'll be able to adjust the tone and character of your Chorus 1 and 2 waveforms. On the VCF board, you can adjust the gate of the repeat function, and adjust the range of your low pass and high pass filters. These trim pots are great because they allow you to make your filter range more aggressive like the MS-20 by adjusting brightness, frequency and balance for each filter. If you think you might attempt to adjust these trim pots, I suggest you make a pen mark indicating their original position if the factory marking is not visible anymore. Most importantly, these old trim pots can be brittle, so if they're stuck and you turn them forcefully, the driver socket may break off, so be careful. For me, the 700 has one of the best sounding oscillators and filters I've ever played. In spite of its limitations by today's standards, this is one of my most treasured synths. Not only for its wonderful tone, but because it represents the beginning of one of the true great synthesizer companies in the world today. If you have any unwanted synths or drum machines, then you can donate them to SynthQuest for use in a future episode. Click the Madfame contact link in the description below to get in touch. Be sure to like and subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on the next episode of SynthQuest.